got your Bible, we'll go to uh, 1 Corinthians 12. We're going to dig into a word of knowledge, a word of knowledge. And and uh, just want to start off and say that you know, we're going to have one more. Uh, next week, we've got the, the third part of, I guess, the, the first third of the gifts of the Spirit. There's three, three sets of three. And so uh, Brother Robert's going to be ministering the, the following week after that. And then we'll take a break and we'll get back right into it as well. So we're looking forward to, to that ministry as well. I always, I always enjoy it and I know you will too. Uh, but tonight we're going to dig into 1 Corinthians 12. Amen? Amen. Amen. It says now, in verse 1, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. And that's, that's the Apostle Paul was speaking that, but I believe the Holy Spirit is the same way, that God does not want us to be. How do you know that the enemy wants us to be ignorant? The no, enemy no. really does want us to be ignorant because this is our power. This is our source yes. of power right here. Right. If he can take away the weapons... Uh, it's, it's hard to defeat an enemy when, when you don't have any weapons in your hand. Yes. And then let's just slide on down to verse 8. It says, for, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. Amen? Amen. Father, we just ask your blessings tonight. I pray for ears to hear and for eyes to see. And, and Lord, for, for me to speak, God, what you'd have me to speak. God, I believe... And I pray that before the, this night is end, that there's a, a revelation, a revealing that takes place in the heart, God, of each one, of who you are and what you want them to do. God, guide, lead, and direct us in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Yes. Amen. 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 So I'm looking at the second of the, the three, and I know there's, there's nine uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit, but the second of the three in this category of the revealing. There's a revealing in... in it's almost like an unveiling. God wants to unveil some things in our life and in this world, and he wants to unveil those things through who? Uh, us. Thank you. Yes, through you. Oh. Not that, yeah, he wants through you, through us. Through you, 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 yes. He wants to do it with the word of knowledge. And Now, just real quick, the word of knowledge deals with things as they now exist, things that are taking place. Therefore, the gift of the word of knowledge is when God reveals through one of his servants, something that now exists or did exist on this earth. Knowledge is a fact. It's a reality of something taking place. And this could be something that you could not know naturally. But God, through his spirit, allows you to know this fact. Uh, it'd be something that your eyes had not seen, your ears had not heard. And normally, this will have to do with some, uh, meeting some kind of need, not a kind of greed. Right. It's a kind of need. I mean, this isn't for sale. If you remember in the Bible when the guy tried to buy the gifts, oh, yeah. he said it, it, it's going to rot with you, my friend. But it's for a, it means God likes to meet need. Amen? Amen. He knows how to meet our need. And, and how many know that God is able to meet all of our need according to his riches and glory? And that's not always cash, is it? No. no. Amen. God meets our need according to his Riches and glory, and that's the supernatural power, I believe, in the Holy Spirit is one way he meets those needs. So we have to look at it and know that God, our God, is all <coughs> omnipotent. He's omniscient, omniscient, he knows all things, He's and God is willing to let you in on what is going on. He's willing to reveal some things to you, and he wants to do it through you. That's yeah. an amazing thing. God is everywhere. He's all present, and he wants to let you know some things. He has all knowledge of things. He knows of every person, every place, and he knows of every need. That's an amazing thing because that's, that's mind-blowing for us to be able to comprehend that, that he's everywhere, he's all places, he knows all things. He not only knows what we're doing, but he knows the intent of the heart of why we're doing it. Yes, he does. And God has it all, again, he shares this miraculous knowledge with you, but again, we have to look at it, and it is a fragment, it is a word of knowledge. He doesn't give us all knowledge. He gives us a word of knowledge, a fragmented portion of this knowledge. Yes. So, you know, this isn't something for us to, uh, and, and generally it's for a need. It's not something for us to do a seminar, seminar or a sideshow on. But this is to meet a need as we reveal something. So, you know, and, and, and I, I really hope as we slow this down and break it down, it, it starts clicking at a deeper level. Because I know the church talks about the word of wisdom or word of knowledge, and sometimes I feel like we go through it so fast that we skip over some things. We skip over and we want to fill in some gaps because for us to be able to walk in these things and to grasp these things, 
that helps if we understand what we're walking in or why God wants to do them in our lives. And, um, you know, if maybe you're just a 100 mile an hour person, you don't need to know. You just say, I'm just walking in. I'm just doing whatever God says. But God has a purpose. God's very, uh, he's very wise. He's got reasons why he does things and there's purpose behind it. So we look to the scriptures first and foremost to understand it. And we can look in the Old Testament in 1 Kings 19, 14, and 18. And, and this is God gives a word of knowledge to Elijah. And, and the Bible says this because he, he says, and he said, Elijah said, I've been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. They've thrown down thine altars, have slain the prophets with the sword, and even I, even I am the only one left, and they seek my life to take it away. Now, Elijah is, he's saying this prayer, uh, he's talking with the Lord, he feels alone, and he feels discouraged. Mm -hmm. This is still Elijah, though. Now, we know, first of all, that God doesn't want us to be discouraged. No. He, God really doesn't want you to be discouraged. And the second fact is, God doesn't want us to have pity parties. No. That's right. God doesn't come to our pity parties. <laughs> I mean, we throw a lot of them, don't we? But he doesn't want to go to them. So he doesn't not only want us to be discouraged, but he doesn't want us to have pity parties. So God reveals something to Elijah, and through that it meets a need. He shares to him the heart of others and their actions. So when you look at verse 18, he says, Yet I God speaks back. He says, Yet I have I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth with which hath not kissed unto him. See, God not only knew how many, but he also knew what they were doing. Yes. And he reveals that to Elijah. He gives him that word of knowledge, that right now word. God gave Elijah to know, and it was for a purpose to change his mind, and it was to change his attitude. Mm. Amen? Amen? See, God doesn't change people or things, but he's all about changing us. Yes. God wants to move through us. He wants to <laughs> flow through us. And what does he do? He takes away the discouragement that Elijah had. Because Elijah was feeling discouraged, like, I'm the only one. It's just me, God. I'm, you know, he starts feeling down. But God reveals to him some things. Now, I, know, I pray as we go through this, you're going to see where God has given you a word of knowledge in the past. And you just didn't notice it. But I believe God, and when we become more sharpened to the things God's doing, it begins to reveal to us that God does want to flow through. Yeah. Amen? Okay. See, he cancels out the pity party by revealing and it met a need. Not only did it take away his discouragement, but Elijah no longer had the pity party. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yeah. It got canceled. The party was canceled. We was having it at 2 o'clock on Tuesday, and it's gone now. Amen? Yeah. So we see that in Elijah, but we can also see it a different form where God meets a need, and it's in the prophet Elisha with Gehazi. This is a little lengthy, but... Uh, Gehazi, he's following Naaman in, in 2 Kings 5 and 21 through 27. And if you remember the story, Naaman saw someone running after him. He gets down from the chariot to meet him, and he said, is all well? And he said, all is well. He said, my master sent me to say, there, they are, there have just now come to me from the hill country to Ephraim, two young men of the sons of the prophet. Now please give them a talent of silver and two changes of clothing. Gehazi got a little, he didn't have a need, but he had a greed. He had a greed here. And he says, and Naaman said, well, go ahead, accept these two talents. And he urged him and tied up two talents of silver and two bags, two changes of clothing, laid them on two of his servants, and they carried them before Gehazi. And when he came to the hill, he took from him the other from their hand and put them in the house. And he sent the men away and they departed like, oh, I'll get it out after Elijah leaves. Elijah won't even know. And he went in and stood before his master. Elijah says to him, where have you been, Gehazi? Do you see another type of, of this in, in the, the book of Acts where, where Peter asked um, uh, Ananias and Sapphira the same type of question? He's straight out asking him a question, right? He says, where have you been? He says, he says, well, your servant went nowhere. I mean, he couldn't think of anything. I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> He's probably just looking at him. But Elijah says to him, did not my heart go when the man turned from his chariot to meet you? My heart was broke. My heart went. My heart went with you. I saw those things. God showed me these things. And he said, was it a time to accept money and garments, olive orchards and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male servants and female servants? As a question, he asked him that. Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and to your descendants forever. 
So he went out from his prayer or from his presence a leper like snow. Now Gehazi was the one that pursued Naaman and took the silver and raiment. But Elisha knew in the spirit a word of knowledge came on that God was revealing to him. God revealed this to Elisha. And Elisha then speaks to Na uh, a word over uh, Gehazi. Um, and he says, cursed. He, he cursed him. Well, he didn't curse him. He spoke that word to him. Because it wasn't God, it wasn't Elisha that cursed him, but it was, but it was Gehazi that cursed himself. So sometimes we think, well, Elijah spoke a curse over it, and that's why it was cursed. But it was his deeds that cursed him. It was his greed that cursed him. Uh, I had a pastor, he would always say the opposite of love is always greed. You'd think it would be hate, but it's greed. Because greed is very selfish and consuming. And Gehazi and everyone else needed to know that sin is a curse upon us. That sin became a curse. And Elijah reveals this to him, and it's recorded. There was a need for us to know that. Now, Elisha, another instance in 2 Kings 6, um, he, the prophet Elisha used the gift of the Spirit to reveal military plans. He revealed to the armies of Syria coming against the king of Israel. He, here he is. He's sitting in his house. He tells the king how the armies are going to attack and how they would confront them. But the Syrian king accused some of his, his intimates of tre uh, treachery, but they assured him that this was only a prophet of God. He had a word of knowledge. So he knew something was going to go on. God is omni omnipotent, and he speaks through Elijah to reveal these things. There was a need to know, and God revealed it. So I want us to see a pattern here. That when there's a need, God can reveal some things. How many know we live in a world where there's a lot of needs? Yeah. I believe God wants to reveal. Who does he use to do those things? Oh, he uses the internet, right? Google. Yeah. He wants to use us. He wants to use his vessels. Amen? So we also can look, one, one last one, we'll see Jesus operating in the word of knowledge. In the New Testament, the Lord Jesus exercised his gift with great authority. In John 1, 47 and 48, he says, Behold, in Israel, I indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathaniel says to him, Where did you, where, whence knowest thou me? How did you know me? How do you know who I am? And Jesus answered and said, Before that Philip called thee, when you was under the fig tree, I saw you. I saw you there. I mean, God can reveal some things to us. He can reveal, he reveals something. Supernaturally, the Lord Jesus saw the man the day before sitting underneath a fig tree. Now, this revealing was needed by Nathaniel to build his faith in the Lord. Now, I want that's, that's, hold on for just a second because God knows what we need. So the question is, have we ever had someone come up and say something at the right time to make you say to yourself, how did they know that I was going through that? How did they know about they? I know they didn't know that had to be who? The Lord. That was the Lord that spoke that to me. And they have no idea, do they? Because we play our cards well. And we, uh, we got great poker faces. We just, and we're like, what in the world? How did they have? Because God revealed it to them because we had a need. Hallelujah. I told you about the time whenever whenever we went to the first church and I was oh so unsure and I was standing there praying and I felt like God had left me and the minister, the evangelist that night, he looked down and he turned around and he said, he looked right at me and he said, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Yes. And I boom, that's the word I needed to hear right there. Tis so sweet to trust. And they sang that song, and I mean, the big crocodile tears. And, and you can never find a Kleenex when you're not in your whole church. It's like, man, yeah, we buy all these Kleenexes in churches, but if it ain't your church, you don't know where they're at. Where's the Kleenex? Can somebody? You just get it on your sleeve and everywhere. It's awful. But God knows because we have a need, and he reveals that it's the right path. Has that happened to you before? So if we know it's happened in our life, guess what God can do? He can use us. He wants to use us to reveal some things to other people. Yes, he does. Amen? Because oftentimes what happens, we, we read Jesus do it, and we say, well, that, that's the Lord. The Lord, of course, he's the Lord. Of course, he knows all things. Of course, it's Jesus. I mean, he walks on water. He does all these other great, amazing things. He opens blades, he spits in people's eyes. And it's the Lord. I mean, you know, whatever he does works. Uh -huh. Right? I mean, you yeah. know, he can put a, a ho-ho in their eye. All of a sudden, boom. 
It's a ho ho. Look at that. <laughs> because it's the Lord. But yes. guess what? He wants to use these things as well. We have to stop and see that these are the gifts of the Holy Spirit working through our Savior, but they are also the gifts that were designed to work through us. Yeah. We're the church. Amen? Amen. Uh, flowing through Jesus, and it's supposed to be flowing through us exactly the same way when the need arises. When the need arises, God is able to reveal for his purpose and for his glory. All these things. Amen? It's not mystical. It's not a, a superpower or an ability. It's, it's, we have to see the, so that lives can be saved, transformed. Because I tell you, when you walk in the word of knowledge, it blows people's mind. Yeah. Because they need that. Just like when Christ said that to Nathaniel. I saw you sitting underneath the tree yesterday. <coughs> Big deal. How would you know I was underneath that tree yesterday? It blows people's mind, doesn't it? Because they, they realize that there is a God who is overseeing them. It's bigger than our words. It's about God. And that's what, they, and see, we get caught up thinking it's about us. Well, they're not going to believe me. They're going to think I'm crazy. Nobody cares if you're crazy. We're all crazy, okay? It's all right. We just, we just got to keep rolling with what the Lord says. And you feel like you're out of it. And the enemy definitely does not want you walking in the gifting of the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom, any of these things. But you have to go with what God has put in you, amen? Because he wants to reveal these things. And I'll tell you, the, the, the people that I see do it the best, they, they'll, they'll typically do it in a question format. This is what I'm seeing. This is what God is speaking to me. Is there a confirmation of that? Does that make any sense to you? Yeah. And they'll say, yes. Yes, it does. Absolutely. I, I know exactly what you're talking about right there. And so when that gift falls upon you, and if there's not 100, I get it. I get there's that. I don't want to be the person that says, you know what? I see a red house. You get a red house? No. I live in a blue house. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know? So, you know, this is what I'm seeing. Is there a red, you know, and ask that question to see, am I on track? Because how many know we see in part we prophesy? There's things we may not nail to a T. But guess what? We can go into that cautiously without saying, I'm just, God has showed me something. And, and we go into King James tone. Yea, verily I say, I see. No, you don't see. That's it's just about you trying to be something, all right? Come on. Yeah. Just be normal. Hey, this is, this is what God's showing me right here. Am I, am I close on this? Am I off? I mean, I've been praying for you, and this is, what I'm, this is what the Lord's speaking to me. That's a very humble way of approaching it. Yes. And how many know God honors humility? Yes. But when we say, yay, 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 I see, they just, <laughs> that's why people have lost credit in the church. You've been there, haven't you? Yeah. You know exactly what I'm talking about, yeah. amen? Yeah. Amen, see, God wants to reveal, though, through us. He wants to use us. So we see Jesus with the Samaritan woman in John 4, 18, the same way. He says, for thou hast had five husbands, and he who you're with now is not even your husbands. <coughs> and you said it. I said it truly, didn't I? Amen. Again, a revealing to bring her to salvation that she needed. Jesus wasn't going to call her out for having five wives or five husbands. That's 2020 version. Anyway, it, 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 he was calling her out because of the fact she needed saved, right? It didn't have anything other than the fact that it blew her mind that there was a prophet in town, a seer, someone who actually knew what was going on. Yeah. And she says, come and see a man who told everything about me right here. Come on into town. And, yeah, and yes. they, a revival broke out of that community. Salvation came because there was a need. This wasn't for anybody to get marveled about and say, whoa, look at you, look at me, i got a word for you. No. This is one about seed gets on. This is a need that needed to be met right here. Amen. We have, we have to believe that there is an omnipotent God. See, we, in our minds, we can say God is omnipotent. And we can say we're saved. But God doesn't want us just to be, if he wants you just to be saved, call you home today, right? Yeah. You're done. Yeah. I'm done. No point in being here. But he wants us to be vessels to be used. Amen? Yes. See, we are vessels. We are part of us. And, and I thought of this this week because if I fill this up with trash, you would say, I don't really care to take this home. It's a trash can. But it's, it's the can that you don't want the trash inside of it, right? Yeah. But if I fill this full of ancient golden coins that I found off of a sunken ship somewhere, <laughs> and I said, I would like to share these with you. You would say, man, I didn't know we were that close, but praise the Lord. <laughs> I, I, I haven't known you that long, but it's okay. I accept. And, and you would take the whole basket, wouldn't you? 
And so I, I don't even have time to put them in my coat pocket. I'll just take the whole can. Thank you very much. <laughs> because it's the vessel that it comes in. Yeah. We don't really, it's not a concern about the vessel. It's what's in the vessel. Now, when we're full of trash, there's nothing. Nobody really cares about it. But when God's using and filling us up, there can be some amazing things in there, amen? Yeah. God can put something inside of us. And not, no great honor to the, the, the vessel there. And no great honor to this vessel here. This vessel's just perishing. But the mouth, the words we speak are powerful yeah. when they're anointed by the Spirit. Amen? Yeah. And guess what? We can say some things a little bit goofy, a little bit off sometimes, but it's still, like I was talking in the book of Acts, it still registers properly in their ears. Have you ever prayed for someone? Have you ever gave a word for someone and you said, I, I did not say that? But they yeah. heard God say what he said. We right. talked about that on Wednesday night. It's an amazing thing. Whenever they said, how do we all hear them speaking in our own language? You tell me how 120 people were talking, but they were hearing their own language. Because they're hearing. Amen? And I've been, I've been really praying that more and more. As I speak, God, transform their hearing. Yeah. Transform. I, I know the humility in my voice may not really register always, but let them hear you, God. Yeah. Let them hear you. Amen? And even as we go about our business... We see this in the apostles as well. This gift of knowledge, this, this word of knowledge coming forward. And, and in Acts 10 and 19, Peter, Peter knows that there's, there's three messengers from Cornelius. They're on their way. They're going to inquire about him at the gate in the house of, of Simon the Tanner. In Acts 10 and 19, he says, While Peter was pondering the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. I mean, what do you do with that? Hey, three people are looking for you. Or what? <laughs> the Spirit says, rise, go down and accompany them without any hesitation, for I have sent them. And Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you're looking for. Now get this. What is the reason for your coming? Now how many today, if God tells you to do something, you want to know why? Yep. But Peter went down there and said, what do you want? Because he was just, you know, he had a word of knowledge to go somewhere, to be somewhere. But how many know God doesn't give us all the information on the front end? Yeah. Sometimes we just need to go and find out when we get there. Right. Right. Isn't that the hard part about following the Lord? Yeah. I want to know up front, don't you? Yeah. I'm, I'm I just getting real. I want to know what's going to happen when we get there. I want to know if it's, you know... Because we live in such terrible times and we're getting martyred and people are, you know, and, and I'm being sarcastic. But, but think about this. We, we don't even live in those times and we still want to know. Yeah. We still want to know what God's doing. I want to know the front to the end, the beginning to the end, God. But he gives us fragments, a word of knowledge. He gives us to go there and talk to these three men. He greets Cornelius with the words, I am who you're looking for. And this is a communication of God's knowledge. There is a need. What was the need? Cornelius wanted to give his heart to the Lord. And then through that, he's revealing to Peter the reason. Cornelius wants to come to salvation. Amen. God is not going to allow us to get in the way of someone getting saved. Yeah. And I believe this. If Peter had way, he's going to send somebody there. I mean, Cornelius yeah. was right. He was ready to give his heart to the Lord. And I believe God wants to do those things. We're not going to get in the way because he will have his person to do his work. But all we can do is that the more we're available to flow in the spirit, to be used of him, we can be part of the body of Christ in a greater way. Amen? We can walk in this word. So we look at the purpose of this gift today. At any time, God conveys information supernaturally which has to do with that which is now in existence. It is the word of knowledge and operation. Yes. God wants to do something. Amen. This gift, I believe, could resolve a lot of problems in churches, in families, in a lot of situations. It could resolve national problems if the leaders of the nations had confidence and faith in God. Yes. He could give our leaders a word of knowledge. And I believe he does to some levels. I believe God's doing a lot more things than what we think he is. I believe God is speaking. Amen? Amen. But we have to understand that he still wants to. Sometimes we just think we're just a little, we're just the middle of Indiana. I mean, God's not going to do anything well in Indiana. You know. He's just, we're just all passing through. But the reality is God wants to use us in a supernatural way. 
And sometimes because what we believe, that's what we get. But if we could believe and we could accept the fact that God wants to use us and use this supernatural gifting of a word of knowledge through us, it can transform us. I believe there are so many needs among us, and God is wanting to reveal them to us. I believe that. I believe there are a lot of needs. I, I mean, just take, for example, in your family, your enemy, your immediate family. Are there any needs? Okay. What about people in your church? Are there any needs? What about the people uh, in, in, on your uh, work site or school? Are there any needs there? Do you know any sick people? What about yourself? Do you have any needs? Now, if there's all those needs, do you not think God would want to reveal something about something? Amen. I believe God wants to do that. So, you know, last week we did a little, we, we prayed for one another. And I, I really, and I asked the Lord, and I want to do this just a little bit different. But I want us to pray, and I got some note cards here. Because I want you just to pray individually. And Robert, would you be gracious to have so much here? Thank you so much. And, and here's what here's what we're going to do. I don't, I don't I want you to kind of clear your mind out. And I want to ask them. I want you to pray and just ask the Lord to reveal through you. And make sure you got something to jot down with. To reveal through you. To meet needs in your life. To meet needs in the people around you. The question may be, do I need to go somewhere? Do I need to say something, do something? That the Lord would lead us and give us a word, a direction, our steps to meet needs. Touch lives. How many know this world needs the Lord? And I believe he wants to use you to reveal some things. Maybe he wants to use you. So, I know there's been times in your life when you really felt you should do something. And and I've been there before. There's time. Oh, I need to go talk to that person. And I said, well, if, if, if I'm going to throw out a fleece now. If the building's on fire, I'm going to talk to them. If, if everything's right, I'll do it, right? And, and, and what we do is we we excuse ourselves. We, we put all these stipulations. If this, if this, this, if this, if this, this, this is right, I'll do it then. You know, if... If, if an earthquake happens in, in Puerto Rico, and at the same time there's a full moon, and at the same time uh, the Tennessee Titans win this football game, I, I'll do it, Lord. Uh -uh. But, but the reality is, he doesn't, he doesn't say all those things, does he? He speaks to our heart, and he gives us a direction to do things. And I believe the Lord wants to direct our steps. We talk about the Lord directing our steps. I believe the Lord wants to speak through us. So what I want to ask you to do is I want you to pray. And say, Lord, I ask you to reveal to me a need. And it may be in someone else. It may be someone you know. I believe it's going to be someone you know. And Lord, what am I to do? Am I supposed to say something, do something, go somewhere, maybe just pray for them? Maybe you're going to call them up after you leave church. But I believe that he wants to reveal something. And I want you just to pray about that for just a minute. And then I want you to write it down. And, and that, then I'm just going to ask you. I'm going to ask you to do it. Because I believe the Lord wants to do something for us. Amen. So let's just take a moment. Uh, Sonny, if you could just turn on something down back there. And, and we're going to start praying. I want you to just take right down whether you want the Lord wants you to go somewhere. Say something. Do something.